Hey guys, we're starting unit two, which is functions. We're going to talk about lesson six today, which is understanding functions. Here's our first definition to work with. A function is a relationship between an independent variable, x, and a dependent variable, y, where each value of x, your input, has one and only one value of y, your output. Okay, so get that definition down. We're going to talk about different ways to represent functions. The first way that you see here is a table. A table has an input values and corresponding output values. So your, our input values are 1, 2, 3, and 4, and the corresponding output values are 3, 6, 9, and 12. And we know this is a function based on looking at our table because each input has one output, only one output. So there's no repeats in our input, if you remember that. If we look over here at our mapping diagram, our mapping diagram, it's where we line up our inputs in a circle and we line up our outputs in a circle and we draw an arrow from the input value that corresponds to each output value. And we know this is a function because we see the arrows are only coming out, one arrow is only coming out of each input. So the phrase to refocus in is each value of x has one and only value of y, one and only one value of y. So each input has one and only one output. Okay, another type of function, another way to represent a function is a graph. So here I plotted those four points. It's hard to see, but it is those same four points that we've been talking about. We have one, three, two, six, three, nine, and four, twelve graphed here. And we know this is a function because if we do our vertical line test, if you remember that, each x value only needs, only can have one y value. Going back to our definition, each value of x has one and only value of y, so each x. And then here, our equation is also a representation of a function. y equals 3x is this representation. 3 times x, if we look at each input, say 2. If I input 2 for x, 3 times 2 is my output 6. So this is our rule. If you remember from elementary school, that's how you would always phrase these. You've been working with functions for a long time. Okay, so this is good. Let's talk about some other things. So here's an example. I want you to write this example down and then we'll talk each part at a time. So you're going to pause the video each time we stop. Sorry, I'm trying to get out of the way. Example one, John and Mallory were born on October 16th. When Mallory was six, her brother John was two. So copy that down just so you have it and then we're going to start talking about the problem. Part one, Write an equation that can be used to determine John's age given Mallory's age. So you have to think, okay, an equation deals with variables. So I'm going to let J equal John's age. We could use X, we could use Y as a variable, we can use anything, but because we're using the letter J, it'll help remind me that it's talking about John. And I'm going to use M for Mallory's age. That says age there. Kind of looks like ago. It's H. And so I want to think, what makes sense? When Mallory was six, her brother John was two. So here it says, um, write an equation that can be used to determine John's age. So we need J equals, because J is John's age. J equals, and then you want to think, what do I put in for Mallory that would give me John? So if I put in Mallory six, what do I do to six to give me two? Well, six minus four is 2. So this is our equation. This is our answer to part 1. J equals M minus 4 because if John is 10, right, or I'm sorry, if Mallory is 10, I can determine John's age. Ma t Mallory is 10, so 10 minus 4 is 6. So when Mallory is 10, John is 6. And you can just use logistically, if you have a brother or sister, how this would make sense in your life or just anybody that is older or younger than you. Okay, the second part, write an equation that can be used to determine Mallory's age given John's age. So this is the same thing but slightly different. Because we want to be given Mallory's age, it should be M equals. Same let up, like this being J equaling John's age and M equaling Mallory's age. Those, those uh, rules that we determined, they're not changing, so M still equals that. 
So I have n equals j plus 4 in this case. So if John is 2, 2 plus 4 gives me Mallory, which is 6. If John is 10, that means Mallory is 10 plus 4 is 14. Good. All right, let's work on this one where we have complete the table of values to show the relationship between their ages. So start copying down those tables, and then we're going to fill it in together. All right, good. Need to pause it? Go ahead and pause it. We're doing this. So if Mallory is 11, I started it out. 11, if Mallory's 11, how old is John? Well, I could use my equation. 11 minus 4 is 7. If Mallory is 12, 12 minus 4 is 8. If Mallory is 13, 13 minus 4 is 9. If Mallory is 14, 14 minus 4 is 10. If Mallory is 15, 15 minus 4 is 11. And if Mallory is 16, 16 minus 4 is 12. So now I have a bunch of data. If I wanted to graph this, if I wanted to make a map and diagram, whatever the case is, I could do that because I already came up with an equation and that helps me use my table really quickly. And then we'll be able to talk about the relationship between their ages. All right, what if we're given John's age? That was our second equation. So if John is one, how old is Mallory? Well, one plus four is five. If John is two, how old is Mallory? Six, good. If John is three, seven. If John is four, Mallory is eight. If John is five, Mallory is nine. If John is six, Mallory is 10. And if John is seven, Mallory is 11. Cool. So again, another set of data that we can talk about. So get all this down. Hopefully it makes sense. We got just two more questions to talk about. Okay, so looking up here, ignore all these words. I want you to look. Describe the relationships. This is part three. Describe the relationships in the tables. So you're looking at your tables. You already wrote them down. Is either relationship a function? So you need to look at those. So let's think. Mallory is four years older than John, and John is four years younger than Mallory. If you use any ages for Mallory as an input, so looking at when Mallory was the input, John's age will always be four less. So there's only one possible output for each input. It's not like if Mallory is when she's five that John could be anything but one. He's not going to be seven when she's five. Their age relationship is not going to change. So, and the same is true if we were looking at John's age as an input. Therefore, both relationships are a function. You're going to see a lot of cases where one way is a function and the other isn't. But in this case, both ways are a function. Okay, please get all that down, pause the video, and then we'll talk about part four after. Okay, part four, the problem states when Mallory was six, John was two. Mallory's age is three times John's age because two times three is six. Can this be the rule? Can this also be a rule for their ages and why or why not? And it cannot be a rule, no. Multiplication cannot be a rule to describe the relationship between ages. It will only work at that age. Like next year when Mallory is seven and John is three, three times three is not seven, it's nine. So it only works in that case. You gotta be careful with that. So if it's ever a comparison of ages, it's never gonna be multiplication because everybody ages at the same time, right? We all get older. The difference between people's ages is never going to change. All right, cool. So that's understanding functions.